uh, have my honourable friend, the member for Stirling, uh, raising our eyes, uh, not just around this narrow definition of the law, uh, but to actually the real prize here, which is what can we do to facilitate our ongoing leadership in this decarbonisation agenda? Uh, and the answer is much more. And he was delighted, uh, delighted to hear him supporting and welcoming the offshore wind sector deal, which is actually utterly transformational. We have the, the best location in the world uh, in terms of wind speed and shallowness of Marian Basin to generate offshore wind, and it is truly transformational. And of course, he will know very well uh, that actually the opportunity for skills transfer from the world-leading oil and gas industry into onshore wind, oh, sorry, offshore wind as part of the transition, uh, continues to, uh, to, to be very important. I'll mention onshore wind. Uh, there is, of course, uh, a whole series of questions to be raised about onshore wind in terms of the size of the wind farms that are there. Um, I'm aware and have debated this many times with the honourable gentleman uh, opposite, but I would also say that the Scottish Government's own analysis shows that there's over two gigawatts of wind already in planning, and now not all of that will come to fruition, but we are certainly in an enormous uh, uh, pr process of repowering and upgrading onshore, uh, existing onshore wind farms. Um, the Honourable Gentleman for Stirling also raised something, let, let me just make this point and then I'll give way, um, raised something that is absolutely my experience as well, which is the day-to-day -day working relationships with the ministers of the devolved administration are excellent. I uh, chair a quadrilateral meeting, uh, which we, uh, we hold regularly uh, to discuss uh, Brexit preparations. Um, the, 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 the conversations are professional, they are focused on working together. There is a great deal of trust. And I, as the Honourable Gentleman said, would far rather see uh, harmonisation, not dissent, uh, in these conversations. It is always dispiriting, and I will take the Honourable Gentleman's intervention from Kilmarden Loudon, that we almost never hear uh, his party welcome any of the progress that the UK Government is making. Well, I don't, I'm afraid it was delivered in such a, a welter of negativity that perhaps I didn't pick it up, Madam Deputy Speaker. But I will allow him, uh, with this intervention to congratulate our four nations on the progress they have made. I'll give way. Uh, I, th yeah, I thank yeah. you for giving way. She obviously That's doesn't know my personality. That's how I deliver compliments <laughs> and amongst that wave of negativity. <laughs> but if I go back to the earlier That's intervention I was trying to make, will her government release the correspondence yes. between the Secretary of State for Please Scotland and her department me. rather than hiding behind the Freedom of Information yep. Exemption claiming its government policy uh, formulation? Will they release that correspondence? Yeah. Look, I'm hoping the honourable gentleman will, will, will regain his usual sunny nature should we have a recess break next week. I, it clearly is, is not my decision, as he will know. These comments are made uh, to the Secretary of State, and I would be, uh, would be wrong for me to comment on that. Uh, I'll give way again briefly, but I sense the House would like to, uh, like to wrap up, and I'd like to give way to the honourable gentleman, the leader of the opposition. I'll take, take you first. Yeah. Potential future leader of the opposition. Well, you might. I mean, you might... Oh, all right, OK, sorry. I thank the um, Minister for giving way. Of course, if she was so keen for this correspondence to be released, she could just release it. She doesn't have to wait for an FOI uh, inquiry to go through. She could just release them and publish them now. Here, here. It's, it's not my decision, and it is not correspondence uh, of which I uh, ha have, have been informed, so he needs to raise the question. I will give way to the, uh, my uh, shadow num member in this particular case. <laughs> You were, you were careful not to tempt fate there, you know, but, uh, but uh, I, I, I would say, Madam Deputy Speaker, um, the, the Minister makes an important point, and actually it's uh, frustrating that the Secretary of State of Scotland isn't here to make these comments directly, maybe to shed more light on the issues raised by members in this House, but she also made a good, an important point about the opportunity of exploiting renewable potential in uh, the coastal waters of the United Kingdom. However, we're not seeing that match with an effort to build the British industrial base around renewables. In particular, we're seeing significant threats to major industrial capacity, such as a BIFAB in Scotland, and industrial development of renewables. And we may be in danger of losing that opportunity altogether. So it's not incumbent upon the Minister and indeed our Scottish counterparts to redouble their efforts to maximise British industrial content and renewable manufacturing projects. I welcome the opportunity to reassure the Honourable Gentleman that the offshore wind sector deal focuses exactly on that, because what had happened historically is we had essentially given out contracts for difference without requiring developers who were taking advantage of those to actually commit to UK supply chain investment. And so what I've set out, set out in the offshore wind sector deal is in return for terming out these auctions up to a 10-year look ahead, which gives us the most secure market uh, look ahead, if you like, in the sector in the world. We expect 
expect UK content to go up to over 60% of the supply chain. And the other thing I was, and, and uh, the point about BIFAP he makes is important. We have, of course, worked closely with the Scottish Government uh, through that process. It's been another example of very cooperative working. And the other important point about the offshore wind sector deal uh, is that I would like the workforce diversity to improve dramatically. And we've set a target of over 30% of the jobs uh, going to women in that sector. Um, so uh, I, I think I've covered all the points of, uh, that I wanted to cover, Madam Deputy yeah, Speaker. Yeah, yeah. So I will, uh, I will therefore commend the draft order to the House. But I would also commend, which I think would be a marvellous slogan for politics going forward, up with harmonisation and down with dissent. And with that, I beg to move. <laughs> I don't know if the Honourable Lady is going to get total agreement to that one. The question is, the motion on constitutional law as on the order paper. As many as that opinion say aye. Aye. On the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. We, <laughs> we now come to the general debate.